Hey everybody, my name is Tez Fraser. Welcome back to my channel. As I take a break from working on my game Rated Mutant, links in the description, uh, I decided that I would do a text RPG slash adventure tutorial in Python this week. So with that being said, you know, uh, it is split into six parts just to make it easier on myself and also all of you. So this is part one of the tutorial. Uh, we're just gonna go through some basic programming things, uh, some basic Python. Also, full disclaimer, uh, this tutorial isn't the most refined thing in the world. This is basically um, how someone might prototype a game in Python, right? Like, we're not doing classes, we are not uh, coming up with some high-level uh, data structure. Uh, this is going to be spaghetti code through and through, but it'll be completely functional and valid. There is no wrong way to program. Uh, but there are sometimes better ways. This is just one of those ways. So, some things to note about Python and programming in general. We're just going to go over some generic terms, just so that you're not going to be confused as we progress through the rest of this tutorial. Also, if you already know these things, you know, feel free to already uh, skip to part two, where we're actually going to start programming things like this. Part one is literally just informational. A variable is literally something that holds something else. So let's say that I had a variable named fruit. Fruit can be anything I want it to be, and I can set it to apple, for example. So then when you ask what fruit do I have, I can say apple. If I want to change that fruit, then I can say fruit is equal to banana, and that will change what the fruit is. And the next time you ask me what fruit I have, I can say banana. So just remember that variables hold something for us. It's just a great way to reference something that we might not know exactly what it is at the time. You can think of this as like uh, X or Y in math, like it just holds something. So a list. I like to think of lists as a box. Uh, that box holds things. The things inside of that box are numbered and it starts at zero and then goes to however long it is, meaning Let's say we have a box and there's three objects in it. If I wanted to get to that first box, I would say that, oh, let me get the list at index zero. The first element in the box is zero. And then it would go zero, one, two. Uh, and that would reference all three things in said box. I know that sounds a little confusing, but we will see more examples of that as we get into the code. All you need to know is that a list basically is a box and it can hold multiple things, whereas variables can only hold one thing. Also, you might hear me interchange the words list and table. Uh, that is just because I've been programming forever. And as such, uh, those words are more or less interchangeable to me, even though they do have their nuances. For the sake of this tutorial, you do not need to know the difference in the nuances. Um, and the nuances generally are between programming languages anyway, not even internally in Python. Two-dimensional list. It's as simple, it's more simple than it sounds, and it's basically just the list, the box that we were talking about, holding another box, right? Um, and that's as simple as that needs to get. I will show you guys how to reference those, how to use them. Just know that a two-dimensional list is a list within a list function. You might have also heard them called methods in other languages. A function is just a shorthand for a chunk of code. Let's say I wanted to print something out. Printing things out is very common in programming. Um, printing out just means displaying something on your console. Um, and let's say I wanted to do print happy, print sad, print mad, and I needed to do that in a thousand places. That means I'd have to write 3,000 lines of code, right? Wrong. What we could do is make a function, put those three lines of code in it, and then instead of calling that, you know, instead of writing 3,000 lines of code, we're then only writing the length of the function, which would probably be four lines. And then we call that a thousand times, which means we're only writing a thousand four lines of code instead of uh, 3,000 lines of code. So it's just a fast way to make things easier for yourself, to make readability easier, to cut down on file size. An argument uh, is typically used in conjunction with a function. 
So functions can take in arguments and arguments are basically just information that you might need to know. So print, for example, print is a very simple function, right? Print takes in a string. The string in this case is an argument. So if I wrote print parentheses with nothing inside, that means there are no arguments and nothing would print out. It would print out empty. But if I put in the word fruit, which is that variable from earlier, and remember last time I told you it was equal to banana, meaning it would print banana now. And the word banana would print out to the console. So all an argument is, is a way to pass information to a function. Import, uh, it's very simple. It's what it sounds like. You import libraries that you typically wouldn't have. And if you're asking, well, why wouldn't you just import everything all at once? You know, that could be very inefficient. We don't want to, uh, exponentially increase our file size or anything like that. We only want to use what we definitely want. And as such, we try to limit our imports as much as possible. A while loop. While loops are very simple. They do something while a condition is true. A condition is a true or false statement. So I could say while fruit is equal equal to banana, equal equal in this sense uh, is a comparator as compared to the single equals, which is what you set a variable equal to. And we can just say while uh, fruit is equal equal to banana, we can print out yummy yummy. And that would print out forever because nothing has changed. Uh, but if we then changed, um, if we then change fruit to apple, then it would stop printing out because the condition is no longer true. Similarly, if we put the word break, which is going to be very important to us, if we put the word break, then the uh, while loop would then break and it would stop doing it. So while is just a loop that does something until uh, the condition isn't met anymore. So while loops will go infinitely um, if the condition is still true. Another type of loop that we'll commonly use, use is called the for loop. Uh, a for loop is great for counting. So for example, I told you before there's a list and the list is basically a big box that can hold multiple things. Each of those things has a number. So basically a great way to see what's in that list or to rather go through it is to use a for loop because we know exactly how many times we need to do something. That's just a bit more precise. Um, you can use a for loop or a while loop interchangeably, depending on what you're doing. You can make a while loop a for loop, for example. Uh, it's just, it is a lot easier to just use a for loop. A lot of this is just to make your life a little bit easier. You use a for loop when you're counting, you use a while loop when you're not counting, when you don't know when something will be finished. Uh, for loops are cool because uh, it sets a variable in the beginning that holds the current count, and then it'll count up until it reaches a max number, or inversely, it'll count down until it reaches a minimum number. Uh, our final thing I would say is with Python, spacing matters. Um, we're gonna be using tab a lot. Uh, thankfully, the program that we're using, auto tabs, so we don't really have to worry about that too much, but just keep in mind spacing does matter in Python. Unlike other languages, tab denotes syntax and syntax is the structure of the program, basically, and how sentences are formed, for lack of better words. And one more thing, the hashtag or the pound symbol, depending on what your age is, um, denotes a comment. And a comment is just something in code that is ignored so i will show you guys what i mean about that as i uh go through the tutorial but you know these are just very quick some things that you need to know so yeah i will see you guys in part two i hope that this was informative enough if not i'm sure that you will follow along on the rest of the tutorial and pick things up as they go uh, the topics i'm talking about might seem complicated but they're actually very simple uh so yeah Good luck and I'll see you guys in part two.